Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this video we're going to talk about how to do relationships in Mongoose. Okay, because Mongo is a document database, so essentially all it's really doing is saving data as JSON strings. So essentially you have collections, which you can think of as like arrays, and then objects, I mean documents, which are like objects. So essentially you have a collection of documents, which is really just an array of objects being saved as text, and that's how your data gets saved in uh, a Mongo database, which makes it, this is also what's referred to as a flat file database. It's any database that just kind of saves it as pure text. There's no relationships. Um, they're faster because you're running less operations. You're just purely parsing strings, but you don't have relationships. So you can't do things like cascade. So in an SQL database, you know, you could have a user, they have like relationships to 10 different items. So when someone deletes their user account, you delete that user, it deletes their photos from the photos table, their videos from the videos table, it deletes all the good stuff, which makes it a lot easier because then you don't have to separately go back and create logic to go delete the photos and whatnot. So theoretically, working purely in Mongo, you would have to create that logic. But Mongoose, the library does have a special type of object ID that you can use to kind of create a relationship through um, the, well, it's not necessarily called an ORM because it's not an object relationship manager. I think it's like a document, uh, an object document manager or document object manager, whatever they would call, however you would classify mongoose. But the benefit of this is um, you can create you can't necessarily cascade, but you can create relationships between data. So you can have your data in multiple uh, collections, but still have them related in a way that you don't necessarily have to double store data. So let's walk through this because it's kind of confusing. Like when you don't, like once you kind of get to this point, Mongoose and Mongo can be pretty straightforward to use. It's here where things start to get a little um, tricky. So I do have a template that queues up a express server that with Mongo. That to do that template, you're gonna type in npx merced spin up. Merced is my template scaffolding tool. npx merced spin up. We're gonna this is gonna be the express Mongo build. And we are gonna call this object rel for object relationships. Okay, and that, there it is. Then we will CD into that folder, CD into object rel. So I'm in the folder, I'm gonna do an npm install to install all the dependencies. Okay, so there we go, do, 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 do. Cool, so let's take a look what we got here. Now, a couple things we need to do before we get started. Let me take a look at my package.json, see how I have this all set up. I do have a yen, that's right. Cross E and B, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Did I not put a template.env here? I guess I did not, I usually would. Let's see here. Yeah, so it's expecting that I have a env.yaml. Okay, so what I need to do, okay, is create a new file called env.yaml. It's gonna be where I put my, uh, my, my uh, environmental variables. Usually in my builds, I usually have like a template.yaml or template.env.yaml that you can just kinda change okay so env.yaml uh, there usually is a sample of yep there it is here's a sample in the readme because yaml is a particular way of writing syntax it's just there's yaml there's toml these are just different languages for writing configuration files so essentially the idea here is like there's this category of properties and in that category, so you can think of this as like the name of the object these are the properties in an object and then those properties can have properties and instead of using like curly brackets to separate this as an object, you're just using tabs. So it's like a very Python kind of way of defining uh, keys and values. 
So essentially the way this works is that we have a development environment and a production environment. Okay. Although I think when I most recently updated that, um, yes, right. Cause I have a function here that kind of does all that for us. Okay. Yeah. So basically it's going to assume development if I don't specify otherwise. So basically it'll always do the, by default, it'll do the development variables. That's the way I set it up. Okay. You'd have to specify that the node ENV variable is production. That's a discussion for another day. So point is, as long as you have the file there, you're good. So that's good. That is set. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I got to make sure I have set. Let's go. So that's first things first to get this template to work. ENV.yaml. And again, these directions are in the readme. So if you're wondering how to get this all set up, it's, it's there. Then the next thing I want to do is make sure that my database is going to connect. So let's take a look. What it's, it's, so it's looking for a variable called MongoDB URI. So I'm going to need to specify that because um, that is coming from the environmental variables, as I can see in the code. So I want to copy that. So note to self, I should add that to the template of the dem Okay. And what I want to do is I will Google the, the always the Google, the default uh, local URL, because I have a Mongo database server running locally. Uh, MongoDB local Mongo URI. There's, there it is. So I will put that here. Okay, I'm going to change this over here to object rel because that's our exercise here. So that's the name of the database. Cool. And that should be good. Let me just go back and take a look at the connection file. Is there anything else I need to specify? I think that's good. Save. Let me go over to the server.js, see if there's anything else I need to worry about coming from. Oh, it wants a secret too. Do I have a secret defined? Yeah, I do have a secret. Good. Okay. So I'll just leave that default one. I'm not going to worry about it. Cool. So in this case, my server should be up and running. So let's just try that out. npm run dev to run the dev server. Okay. Oh, it's still missing something. Let's take a look what's missing. I cannot find module.env func in which folder. CS loader. Where did I not find that? Probably here in connection. Yeah, because it's in a parent folder. So we add a dot there. I'll fix that in the template by the time you guys see this video. Okay, and did it connect that time? Yes, it did. You are promoted to open your eye. Must be a string. Got undefined. Okay. So that's telling me it didn't get the environmental variable. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a console.log here just to make sure that the MongoDB URI is actually, we'll see what we're getting. Okay, so we're getting undefined. Okay. Hmm. Let me double check env, env.yaml. Oh, well, it's not there. Because I, I copied into the readme, didn't I? Yes, I did. That would make sense. I like it when errors actually make sense versus when they don't. Oops. And I already cut it out of there, so let's bring it back, cut it again. And let's try this again. Paste. There we go. So save that. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this because I don't think I need this. Or I'll just make a space change just to trigger the restart. Good. Now we're up and running. Good. Okay. Cool. Okay, so note to my note to self, just make those quick adjustments in the template uh, right after this video is done, so it'll be fixed when you use it. Okay, cool. So we have an up and running uh, server. Mongo's connected. We're good. So this is all kind of ready and set to go. And there's even already a user's model. Oh no, not in this one. That's a different setup. Okay, so let's create some models and get get going okay so we'll create a couple quick models we'll say uh, new file and actually I'll just create them both in one file for the sake of 
I'll create them both in one file for the sake of time. So I'm going to call this schemas.js. OK, so just a recap. I'm assuming you've used Mongo in Mongoose before, because this is not a introductory video on Mongoose, Mongo, or Express. Um, const, I'm going to do structure schema and model out of Mongoose, require Mongoose. OK, and then we're going to be making a couple schemas. So I'm going to create a schema. Uh, uh, we're going to say const owner schema equals um, new schema. OK, and that's going to be name, which is going to be a string. OK, keep it real simple. And then they're going to have a single dog. Okay, and the dog is going to be of type mongoose.types.objectID. So what this basically says is that what we're expecting in this particular field is an object ID. So we're looking for an ID of a different object. The question is, where does that object exist? So we're going to create a model called dog. Okay, so that'll be common. Okay. So we will be creating a model named dog, and I got to put a comma there. So there we go. So then I'll create the dog schema. Might as well just do this all together. Dog schema. Same deal, except now this is going to be owner. And it said the dog will have an owner. OK, cool. So basically, all this is saying, hey, look at the owner model, or whatever collection the owner model is being stored at, is storing things at, and look for an object with this particular ID. OK, neat. So now let's see here. Let's do the following. Let's actually create the models then. So let's do a um, const owner equals a model. So again, we're creating a model object. So we're going to specify owner as the where the collection will be. And we're going to be using the owner schema. And const dog equals model dog. OK, we're going to use the dog schema. OK, cool. Nice. Save. OK, so instead of creating routes, OK, again, the only difference would be, well, uh, yeah, let's create the routes. OK, so let's create a controller now. So new file. We'll call this routes.js because I'm going to put it all in one file. So in this case, I need to bring in Express. So I'm going to, well, really, I just need to destructure router from Express equals require Express. And then what we're going to be doing is we also need the user, I mean, the owner and dog. Although I need to make sure to export those from the model. I don't think I did that. Yep. I never did that. So module dot exports. I can only export one thing. So what I'll do is I'll package them in an object. So owner and dog. So now that's exported. So now I'm receiving that object. I'm going to destructure that object here. Require dot dot slash. Oh, that's got to be a string. Dot dot slash models slash schemas that was the file that we were just doing the schemas in. OK, cool. So I got the router and I got the schemas. So first, let's just create a seed route that's going to create a handful of dogs and owners. OK, const, no, no, this would be, well, I've got to create a router. Const router equals 
uh, um, router. Okay, so now we can start defining routes. So router dot get. We'll call this seed. Okay, rec res. Let's make this async. Keep this nice and clean looking. Okay, so first let's just define some variables. So we'll say we have dogs, which is gonna equal an array of potential dog objects. It's just, they're just gonna have a name for now. So name, rover. We'll see, spot. and biff okay and again the owners they only had a property of name and dog so we can pretty much do the same thing with owners so we will do owners as john stacy josie okay Cool. So we got some sample data so that we're going to seed into our database. So then what I'm going to do is we're going to just say const new dogs equals await dogs.create. Okay. And then we're going to pass in all the dogs to create the dogs. And then we're going to say const new owners equals await with owners dot create uh, owners. Okay, and that should, this one route should seed our database. Um, and then just to make sure that we did seed our database, I wanna see that data back, so I wanna return. So what I want to do is I'm gonna do a res.json, and then I'm gonna return an object with the new dogs and the new owners so we can see all of them and have those for reference. So save, okay. So this is again a seed route. We're only gonna run it once. It's gonna put the data in our database. We'll probably never use this route again unless I need to reset the database. So let's add this router. Oh, actually I need to go back and export the router. Tell it's late on a Friday evening. Module that exports equals router. So I export the router so I can import it into the server. So I will, I'll just import it up here. Actually, do I have a place? I think I have a place for routers. Yeah, I'll put it over here. Const router, or yeah, we'll just call this router for now. Const router equals require dot slash controllers slash routes. Okay. And then we just need to add that to our middleware right here in the route section. Yeah, I need to come back and re-examine this a little bit. Okay, so app.use. And what I want to do is use this on routes. That, actually, we'll just use this as the root. Why not? A router. Cool. And then I'm going to get rid of this route. Okay, save. Uh, let me think here. Yeah, I guess let's go to the browser. Okay. So let's see here, localhost 3000 slash seed. Oh, was the server running? Oh, I think it's running on a different port, port 4000. Okay, 4000. And um, does it, will it work? Hmm. Let's take a look over here. We got a problem. It says you are connected to Mongo. Reference error. Dogs is not defined. Oh, did I forget to export dogs owner? And oh, I said dogs. It's dog. There we go. Okay, so let's try this again. There we go, and so we created the three new dogs. So here we have the new dogs. 
And here we have the new owners. Cool. So now what I want to do is at give each dog an owner. So let's create a route for doing that. Okay. Now the thing is, I can only really pass in strings. I can't pass in like specialized objects. But for this to work, it needs to be a type of object ID. So in my route, I have to take a string that has the ID in it and turn it into an object ID. So I do need to bring in mongoose for this purpose. So const mongoose equals mongoose um, require mongoose. Now, I just have to use that whole mongoose.types.objectid thing you saw I use earlier, and I can actually use it as a constructor function to take a string and turn it into an object ID. But that's a lot of typing, typing in mongoose.types.objectid. So here's what I like to do. Okay, I just create a variable called toID equals mongoose.types.objectid. Okay, so this way, I just have to use this as a function. I don't need all that. That's just a lot of typing. Okay, cool. So let's create another route. Okay, router.get. This route will be called adopt. And in that route, what we're going to do is first we're going to identify, we're going to use URL param. So I'm going to say first we have to identify the dog. So we're going to pass in the dog's ID. And then we're going to pass in the owner we are assigning to them. Okay, cool. So that'll be how that route works. Okay, and then we're going to do our handler, rec res. Okay, first things first, I need to take the owner, uh, rec.params.owner, and I want to turn that into an object ID. So rec.params.owner equals to id rec.params.owner that'll take that string turn it into an object id so that's going to be good for when i need it later then i need to go get that one dog that we are going to uh, uh, adopt okay so i have to do a find for the dog so const dog equals dog.find1 Okay, and then we're going to pass in the, actually, I think we can just do find by ID. Yep. Pass in the ID, which will be rec.params.dog. And then we want to do an await on that. So we should make this async. Async. Await. That'll get us the dog. And then I want to update the dog. So I'll say dog dot owner because the dog has an owner property and I can act, now that I actually have the dog as a variable I can actually change its variables as if it was just another object for now so but I have to make sure I save it at the end so I can go dog dot owner equals um, rec dot params dot owner and then I do dog dot save that saves the dog uh, let's save so that way it's saved back to the database and then what we'll do is we just do a res dot JSON and send back the dog now I could have also done this with find ID and update so I could have done this I could have also done uh, and I'll delete this right afterwards or just comment it out const dog equals find by ID dog dot find by ID and update then we pass in the ID of the dog, which would be rec.params.dog. And then I'd pass it an object that would say owner is rec.params.owner. And this would have also done the trick. Okay. Just showing you guys two ways to do it. Okay. So I'm commenting that out. Save. Let's test that out. Okay. And I'm going to open up a new tab, localhost 4000 slash adopt. And let me just see here. Let me just make sure that was what I called it. Yep, adopt. And then we need to grab an ID of a dog. 
So we're going to take Rover. So we'll say Rover, get Rover's ID. And then pass in, we'll say Josie's ID. Okay, cool. And then we're going to pass that in, and that should return me an adopted rover. And there we go. See, rover has the ID. It looks like it's just a string, but because I turned it into an object ID, watch what happens later on. Okay, um, cool. Now let's see what happens if I just try to get all dogs. Okay. So let's create another route, router, and we'll probably wrap it up here, wrap.get, uh, c, c, I want to we'll just say c, meaning c dogs. Okay. Rec dot rec res. And again, I always like making these async functions. Okay, and um, now what we want to do is do a find the dogs. So const dogs equals dog dot find. Pass in an empty object to find all the dogs. And then what I can do is I can chain populate on that. This function, what it'll do is that if any ID, any field is a search by like a, it's a, it's a what's that? What I'm talking about? An object ID field type, it'll actually take that object ID and then go fill it in with the actual object. So instead of showing me this with the ID here, it'll actually show me Josie. Okay, that's at least the hope. Okay, so we'll get the dogs and then res.json will return dogs, but I just need to add an await right here. And that should be good. Save. Okay, so let's open up another tab. Um, localhost 4000 slash C. Okay, owner. Okay, so that did not populate. Okay, as it should have, which tells me one of a couple of things could possibly be wrong. One of the things you always have to be careful for is when you create the schemas, what you put as the ref. I always get confused if I'm referring to the collection or the variable name. So I'm assuming it's going to be the collection. So I'm going to change these to dog and owner because the collection names are owner and dog. So let's save and see if we get a different result now. Okay. Nope. Hmm. Now let me just see here, back here the, let's go back to the routes, dog.find.populate, that should do it. The pipeline after the query executes in response to receive, the separate queries is then executed for each path specified for population after response for each query has been removed, the dogs are passed to the back callback. Two, 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 two. Okay, we get that. Okay. Oops. So then that makes me wonder. So the other thing we can do the diagnosis is to check did we actually make it an object ID? So I'm going to go back over here and console log. And actually, I'm going to change this to make this a little bit cleaner. So what I'm going to say we're just going to create a variable called owner. Okay, console.log owner. And then again, here we're just going to change owner. Okay, and let's do a different pair. So this time, let's, let's get spot adopted. So let's put spot in that first spot in the URL. And let's put uh, John in the second spot. So John's adopting spot. Mm 
Okay, so spot has been adopted. Let's see here. Okay, looks like it's still just console log to string. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And that technically should turn it into an ID. Now let's see what happens if we do the C thing again. Okay, and we get the IDs again. We go back to the schemas again, change these to again to dog owner. Okay, as my next test, what I am going to do is I want to test it whether that function is what I think it is. So console log to ID. Okay, so let's go back and see the dogs again. Uh, oh, there we go. see here oh no I put that in adopt so let me take that back out and put it in C just so that we can see it no pun intended ah. a function so good that's what I think it is okay so my next attempt will be to make sure that all this lines up so I'm gonna make sure the name of the model variable and the name of the collections they all are perfectly in alignment okay only issue with that is now I think that should save it in a whole separate collection so now this should be empty oh, I guess not okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the database. Well, actually, let's just call this this. Um, yeah, let's change the database name. So I'm going to go to the env.yaml, call this. So that way it recreates, that way we're working from a whole new database. I am going to close the server, run the server again. So now it's connected to a whole new database. So C is not going to work. Well, it's going to work, but it's going to find nothing. So I'm going to reseed the database. So now we have a new set of rover, spot, biff, whatnot. So let's reassociate spot with John. Okay, and that seemed to hit a wall. Let's see why. I cannot set property owner of null. Because it's I'm using the old IDs. That's right. The IDs changed because I just reseeded it. So let's see here. Um, let's just start with Rover again. Rover, and let's this Rover will be adopted by John this time. Okay, and let's take a look, see, and still not populating. This is always the tricky part, getting this whole populate thing to work. Okay. Uh, well, it's the routes. Hmm, we are using the populate function, so Technically, that's what should do that. I mean, you can pass it some arguments. So we could specify the model. We could be like, hey, go pull it from the model. Um, that's got to be an object. Again, the model would be owner. So. And we have to specify the path. I think the path is which property, which is owner. 
Okay. So now we're just being explicit about it. Let's see if it does it now. There we go. That worked. Cool. I'm supposed to do it automatically, but that's one way to do it. So basically I specified, hey, it's basically the path, meaning the property to update is owner and update it and pass this ID and find it in the owner model. So there we go. So basically that's what it's supposed to do. So if all the dogs had owners, it would do this for all the owners. So in this case, in the future, when I pull up a dog, I don't have to go separately prepare a query for the owner. Um, using populate, because I set up that object ID type, we'll go pull it. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's the basic idea, just so you can see what this feature does. It, again, it doesn't quite do everything that SQL can do with relationships. And again, technically, there isn't a, still a relationship. Mongo still has no idea that these items are related to each other. This is um, really an abstraction at the at the relationship mapper level at the at the um, essentially yeah ODM object document manager level level at the mongoose level. It's mongoose who's keeping track that these things are related and making those extra queries in Mongo. So it's not that, um, but it's probably doing it more efficiently because it's probably I'm assuming you would iterate through the things that it needs to get get, collect all the IDs and pass it through to one query instead of making a bunch of individual iterative queries, which is probably what we would have likely done had we had the code out all that extra logic. There's also just the benefit of not having to type it out ourselves. Um, so my name is Alex Merced from Alex Merced Coder. If you like this video, um, subscribe, like, share, head over to Dev Nursery, join the Slack and, and Discord channel. There is an, a bot in there that'll remind you whenever I come out with a new video. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Alex Merced Coder. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Alex Merced Coder. And uh, have a great day. I'll talk to you guys later.